And frankly, I can't understand how anyone could be confused by these facts and right versus wrong, yet here we are. Starting with a report out of a new book from the Wall Street Journal's Michael Bender that President Trump told his chief of staff, General John Kelly, that, quote, Hitler did a lot of good things. Adolf Hitler and the word good should never be in the same sentence. Next, you know, he led a genocide. And any attempt at revisionist history to cast him in a favorable light is unconscionable. And yet revisionism appears to be par for the Trump golf course. It's been adopted by his allies when it comes to the election and the insurrection. Worse, a sitting member of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene, continues to be cavalier about analogizing that genocide to the federal government's response to COVID. It was only a few weeks ago she apologized for comparing vaccine mandates and passports to yellow stars. Remember, she went to the Holocaust Museum in D.C. where she professed her newfound enlightenment on the issue. The Holocaust is, there's nothing comparable to it. There is no comparison to the Holocaust and now, it's totally obvious her words were empty. Just look at what the Congresswoman tweeted today. People have a choice. They don't need your medical brown shirts showing up at their door ordering vaccinations. You can't force people to be part of the human experiment. Facts first on CNN. Brown shirts refers to the paramilitary group, the stormtroopers, who helped facilitate Adolf Hitler's rise to power. And she's comparing their role to President Biden's plan for targeted outreach to unvaccinated communities in the face of rising concern about the Delta variant. I honestly can't believe we still need to say this, so I will keep it direct and clear. Do not invoke the Holocaust. That rhetoric is so dangerous, it's hurtful and it's counterproductive, period, full stop. Seriously, stop. What has happened to the one-time party of Lincoln? And what does all this say about their leadership? I'll talk to former Governor John Kasich. That's next. Disturbing new allegations that then-President Trump once praised Adolf Hitler as doing, quote, a lot of good things. This according to a new book by Wall Street Journal reporter Michael Bender. Now, Trump reportedly made these comments to his chief of staff, John Kelly, back in 2018. And a Trump spokesperson is denying the report. Joining me now, former Republican governor of Ohio, John Kasich. He's now a CNN senior commentator. Governor, nice to see you tonight. It's shocking that we're talking about this. The idea of a president of the United States praising Hitler. I mean, this reporting has not been confirmed by CNN, but Bender is quoting General John Kelly. And we're talking about a former president who called white supremacists very fine people. What's your reaction to this new reporting? <laughs> well, if in fact it's true. Uh, there isn't anything that out of a president of the United States would be more despicable. And, and Laura, we have to look at the big picture here. The rise of anti-Semitism, not only in America, but all across the world. 1,200 cases last year in the United States, and we know what's happening around the world. And when you have a president of the United States that, that says that if he said this, that Hitler did some good things. You see, what it does is it brings about loose talk. And we've just seen loose talk here out of this uh, person you mentioned in, in the last segment, comparing people who want to give vaccines uh, and ask, knocking on doors to say, would you like a vaccine? Does she have, understand what the brown shirts, what they did? Does she understand how they went and grabbed people out because they were Jews and, and, and sent them ultimately to their death camps? I mean, I built a Holocaust memorial on the grounds of my state house when I was governor. It's the only permanent one in the country. And I put it there so people would realize six million people slaughtered systematically. And we have somebody who says, allegedly says, well, you know, uh, he did some good things. And this loose talk around brown shirts and the Holocaust, uh, Laura, this is really, really bad. As you know, Jews have been targeted throughout human history. And we see a rise of it now in this anti-Semitism, which I frankly do not understand, is rearing its ugly head once again, and it must be stamped out. 
is so incredibly dangerous for the reasons you said and more. And the idea that it's coming from people who are elected officials in positions of power and extraordinary influence is all the more concerning. And it totally emboldens the behavior. I mean, if the idea is almost like it's being sanctioned, the loose talk, and that it's okay to say it if it's happening at the highest levels of um, our government, right? Well, you know, it, it's just it's unbelievable to me because you think about what happened. What happened to people as they were yanked out of their homes, mothers and fathers leaving children terrified, all put in boxcars, sent to death camps. I was in D Dachau, 41,000 people slaughtered. And you know, you think about Auschwitz. This is an um, unbelievable situation. And what I get concerned about is maybe people don't know enough about it. Maybe these people who use these terms just don't, have, you know, don't have any education in this. They don't even understand what it is. The history of what happens needs to be recognized because if we don't pay attention to history, we know what happens. Things are likely to happen again at this kind of wholesale slaughter. And to try to say, oh, well, but there were some good things that were happening is just an outrage, Laura. You know it, I know it, and people watching this show know it. Any sensible Absolutely. person knows it. Absolutely. I remember as a child uh, in Minnesota growing up in St. Paul and at the JCC meeting with Holocaust survivors and having them tell the story as they showed the numbers on their arms. That was seared into my mind of what they experienced. And I can't imagine people would be so flippant as to compare it in the way that they do. And, and on to current politics as well here we're seeing. I mean, I want to get your take as well on the author of Hillbilly Elegy because J.D. Vance, who is the author, of course, is running for Senate in your state. And he's now saying that, look, he regrets calling Donald Trump reprehensible back in 2016. And I'm just wondering, I mean, is kissing Trump's ring and essentially distancing yourself even from your thoughts of then, is that the prerequisite now for Republicans running in 2022? Well, I, I don't really know much about this story. You know, it's been the holiday weekend. But what I can say is I think that people may, who make pilgrimages or sort of bow to Donald Trump, they got to wonder about their own soul. And so I think we got to be very careful. I mean, you get elected to stand for things. And uh, if people decide, well, they got to kind of uh, kowtow to somebody else and in order to you know, suck up the voters so they can win, that's, that's not a good thing. And I don't know the details of what this gentleman has done or any of the other people running. I've not paid a whole lot of attention to the Senate race in this state, but I know across this country we see a pilgrimage by too many of these politicians going down there and supporting him. And I'm pleased to see that Nancy Pelosi is going to name uh, uh, the Cheney, uh, Liz Cheney, to, to his commission to find out what happened on, on January 6th. I just can't believe we never got that through. So, uh, look, we move on and uh, and see what happens here but there's there's going to be change Laura I'm I'm going to tell you I don't know exactly when it's going to come but people are going to be regret the fact that they are lining up for his approval I don't agree with it I don't think it's good politics and it's certainly not good for the country